Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a trying new makeup. I have a ton of stuff to play with and I did like a bunch of these in a row and then I kind of stopped for a minute because I had a bunch of personal things going on. I can kind of chat about them briefly today, but I just didn't have the time to sit down or the creativity in my mind. I was like kind of just fizzled out in my mind just because I was so stressed with my home life that I just didn't have the creativity to sit down and really like do any of the products justice or do crazy eye looks or anything like that. So I want to get back into it. I asked you guys on Instagram stories. You guys said these are your favorite videos, this and hauls. So I'm going to keep doing them. I know I see a lot of people not on my channel, but just online in general say that they don't like first impressions or they think that they're lazy. And I don't think you guys feel that way. I hope, I mean, looking at the views, you guys watch the most hauls and first impressions. So if that's what you want, I'm going to keep doing it. I have to figure out a way to do my follow-ups. I'm still working on that, but if there's ever um, a product that you want to know like my full review on or you haven't seen me use again, uh, it doesn't mean I'm not using it off camera or anything like that. I'm just testing it behind the scenes and I haven't figured out a way to kind of give you all the information without having like two hour long videos. So that is what's going on. So I, if you guys enjoy these, I'm going to keep doing them. And if my channel really is based around first impressions, I'm okay with that because I'm a makeup lover at heart. Like, I love makeup. It'll never be a time when I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm over this. I love going to Sephora. I love checking the news section. It excites me. Now, there's a lot of launches that haven't excited me, but lately, there's some that do. So uh, I think for me, I love first impressions. I love watching how things apply, swatches, and I like to see people's first impression of products. And of course, I watch a bunch of reviews before I purchase something. Uh, so I think just keep that in mind. This is just my first impression, but I love doing them. You guys love watching them, so I'm going to continue to do them. And um, yeah, just let me know your feedback down below. But on Instagram, it was like an overwhelming yes. I mean, it was like, I would say 95% of people were like, those are our favorite videos, so I'm going to keep doing them. So with that said, today I want to use the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Palette. I've been wanting to use this, but things have been chaotic, so I haven't had a chance. I am excited to use this. This is like a Halloween witch spooky palette. Also want to use this Viseart palette I got from Beautylish. This is their contour and highlight palette. Probably just going to use the contours, but I do want to test this on camera as well as the Jouer uh, Rose Cut Gems palette. This is the new blush palette. I've used this once off camera, but I want to use it on camera with you guys. I also have new Nabla Cosmetics highlighters. These are so pretty. So I want to use those as well as this Fourth Ray Beauty Glisten Up Mist. I think this is the one that uh, Kathleen Lights loves. I have the new Dose of Colors concealer that I bought myself. And then the Kevin Aquan Foundation Balm. I want to try those. As well as the Anna Sue. Uh, this is the Pore Smoothing Primer. I have the Too Faced Spicy Bronzer for Holiday, and then I have a ton of high-end brushes. These are the brushes that I got from Beautylish. I want to try them out. I want to see if I feel like they're worth the luxe price. I know a lot of people, um, luxury makeup lovers, just swear by these. So I want to see, like, do I feel a difference? Because there's some brushes, like, from Real Techniques that I love. And then there's also some from Tom Ford or Kevin Aquan that I love as well. So I don't necessarily know if the price really determines things. For me, it's just, like, the shape of it, the feel of it, and how it blends. So I'm going to tell you which ones stand out to me. And then I do also have these from Kaleido's Makeup. They have a bunch of brushes, and I thought we could use these on the eyes because most of my Beautylish brushes were face brushes. So that's kind of most of the stuff. I have some other things here and there. I don't know what I'm going to do with my lips because I don't really know what I'm going to do with my eyes. I never plan. I just sit down and I go with what I feel. So if you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. If you love new releases, this is probably the channel for you because I try to use as much as possible instead of just using like one or two products. I really try to show you as much as I can. So I love you guys. Thank you for the support and let's get into it. So I want to start off with this primer from Anna Sue. This is the pore smoothing primer and it looks pretty small. It feels similar to the Tarte pore smoothing primer, but more slick and a thinner formula, but they are similar in consistency. So this is supposed to be just for your pore area. So I did prep my skin with a moisturizer, but I want to go in with this on my T-zone and see kind of if I notice a difference in my pores. So when you, this is interesting, the Tarte one, when you put it on your finger, it is like this kind of creamy white color. This one, when you rub it in on your finger, it looks, I mean, I guess if you get a chunk of it, but it like looks clear. So I'm going to apply this right to my pore area. This does have an herbal scent, keep that in mind. The Tarte one does not have a scent. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, 
I mean, this does smell very like floral herbal. It does feel similar to the Tarte, but it is different. A little bit different. This one is a little bit more slippy, like when you rub it between your fingers, it's very slick. So again, I can't really tell you what I think until I apply foundation and I keep using it, but we'll see if that helps kind of smooth out my texture. So before I go in with the Kevin Aquan foundation, I do want to use the Charlotte Tilbury corrector. I have been breaking out for the first time in quite a while. I'm using this on this blemish down here. This blemish has been here. It was like an under the skin. It's been here for about four days. I think honestly just the stress. I've had pretty a pretty rough week. So I've been using these patches on it and it's just kind of drawing out the infection and it's flat now but it's like red. So I want to use this to kind of conceal. So moving into the foundation, this is fairly new. I wanted to buy it and then there was like a surge of foundations and it kind of got uh, put back and then I did receive it in PR. So this is the foundation balm from Kevin Aquan. It is interesting. I mean, it is like a balm or kind of like a cream in a jar, which is kind of interesting. So once you put your finger in it, it's very creamy comes off like this. So the actual product does come with a little brush. I don't think that I'm going to enjoy the brush, but we'll try it on one side. But I really do want to try this brush from Koyodu. So this to me doesn't look like a foundation brush, but it has great reviews. Now I've seen some people in the reviews say they use it for bronzer, but it is technically a foundation brush. It's different, so I thought we could try that on one side as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take the Kevin Aquan brush and dip into the product. So it comes off like this. From what I understand, this is a high coverage product. Ooh, that shade is really light. Okay, so this shade is too light because I just did a self tan last night. Okay, so this is just way too light and I just looked downstairs and they just sent me light. This is the darkest shade that I have. I just don't feel like I can really like make it work because it's just way too light right now. So I'm actually going to wipe this off and go in with the Pretty Vulgar uh, Lava Water Foundation. This one looks deeper, like it's gonna work for me. So I'm going to remove this and then we'll go back in with this because I just feel like I'm not gonna like anything, honestly, because it just doesn't match. So I'll have to try this on a day when I don't have like self tanner. All right, so I went ahead and took that off and then put the Anna Sue primer back on. So I wanna go in with this Pretty Vulgar Foundation. Again, one of the ones that came out in the surge of a ton of new foundations. So they sent this to me in PR a few weeks after launch. I have the shade 25 Skinny Dip. This is called the Lava Water Foundation. I think this is the one that Tati was like loving. So the packaging is really pretty. It has like this cute little bird on the cap. Uh, it's heavy. This is a glass bottle and then it does have a pump. So I have really no idea what to expect with this. So I'm going to pump out three pumps on the back of my hand. It's thick but it's also running so we will see. I don't necessarily know how to use this brush. I think I'm going to dot the product on and then go in with the brush and see. This typically wouldn't be like the type of brush I would use. I mean, it is working quickly. It's just different than what I would typically use. I'm dipping back into the product. I did read some of the reviews that said it just blends it really quickly. I mean, it is blending it and I don't see any streaks. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep applying. I don't have, I don't think I bought another foundation brush. I have like powder brushes. To be honest, this is looking pretty nice. As I said, my skin has been pretty like freaking out and I think it's honestly, I've been so stressed. It's probably been like one of the most challenging couple months just because my dog has been ill and then my other two bulldogs had, I don't know if it was like a bug or something, but they both had diarrhea in the same week. And then my Pomeranian had it and then she was, she has IBS for dogs. So on top of that, we couldn't get her seizure meds down. So we had to like basically shove them down and there's not just one. I've been at the vet literally four times in two weeks and it's just been a lot. So a lot of no sleep because in the middle of the night they're sick. So anyways, my skin's breaking out. It's just crazy. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. Make it stop. I just want healthy, healthy animals. Honestly, I'm shocked, but this brush is really nice. I thought it was gonna like clump up and not blend, but it blended it nicely. And this foundation looks really nice. Uh, I would say it's a medium to full coverage. I mean, that was one 
pretty much one layer. It's pretty smoothing too, which again could be partly because of that pore primer, but it's not gunking up or anything. It looks nice and smooth. I would say to me it looks matte, almost like it has a little bit of like a powder finish, not heavy, but I don't know. I kind of like this. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so now I want to go into the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue. This is the concealer. I bought this from Ulta. I got the shade Light 10. I feel like I got too light. I just feel like I'd rather have too light than too dark because once it's too dark, it's literally you can't use it. And I did purchase online. So the packaging looks like this. It's nice and weighted. I mean, it's pretty much like the size of a shape tape. It does basically have the shape tape wand on it as well. So this foundation is really pretty full coverage. So I'm just going to apply this kind of right there, maybe a little bit in the center. I just want to basically kind of brighten up so it looks uniform. And I'm going to use the Dose of Color sponge. I do like this. I bought this off of Ulta as well. So this shade is definitely yellow toned, but I'm okay with that. Wow, that looks pretty good actually. And I don't really think the shade is too light. It almost looks like it oxidized a little bit. I'm not sure, but when I first applied it, I thought it was brighter. But I'm okay with that because I think my shade's too light. So this is what it looks like. Honestly, I'm really loving the base right now. It doesn't feel super tacky either. I feel like if you're someone that doesn't set, you won't set this. because, Like both of the products, actually. It's... What is the formula like on this? I can't even tell. I mean, it feels like similar to shape tape but when you blend it out it's not like really sticky I wouldn't say it's like a mousse but it almost it goes like cream to powder it does okay I don't know if that's a claim on that but I mean I don't even feel like I need to set my under eyes I will because I just always do but like I feel like this is a combo that I could not set which is like pretty much unheard of for me. So if you have issues with creasing, I think you might really like this on my first impression. I like, I'm not having creasing, like very little, even on my eyelid, it feels almost like a powder. That is interesting, but it doesn't look dry. So for my under eyes, I'm just gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury powder, just like on my T-zone. I'm going to bring it down like on the sides of my nose and I'm using the shade one, which is fair. So for the perimeter of my face, I want to use this by Terry tinted hydro powder in the shade two apricot light. I got this from Beautylish and I wanted to try it out just for the rest of my face because the original that had no tint to it was, it was white and I think it was supposed to be like translucent, but it definitely lightened. So I would really only use it in my T zone, but I'm going to use this one like all over here. All right, so for this, I wanna use the Sonia G Face One brush. I would use this to powder my face. It's very similar to the Kevin Aquan that I like, and this has been raved about. I got this again in my Beautylish haul. I will link my Beautylish haul down below if you wanna see everything I picked up, but that is where I got these brushes. Oh my God, this is like butter on the skin. This brush. Wow. I'm actually shocked. This brush puts the Kevin Aquan to shame. Even though I still love the Kevin Aquan. Oh my god. I don't think I've... And I'm literally... You guys know I'm not somebody that's like, Oh my god. Every product. But... This like glides. Like there's no scratchiness. Wow. They are not lying. This is like silk. Silk on your skin, which I think is really nice too because it's so soft and it glides just like so easily that it's not gonna move what's underneath. This feels like, I don't even know how to describe it. It probably is like the softest brush ever. And that powder did a great job. I feel like I got a good color for me, so I'm like really happy with these. So I'm gonna jump off camera and do my brows and then we'll try out this Surratt uh, brow pomade afterwards to see if we can really get them to lift. If you want a brow tutorial, I will link it down below. I just did one, it's super quick and easy. So if you're interested in knowing how I do my brows, as of late, I will link it down below. Okay, so I did my brows. They're not the best, but you know, we're just gonna go with it. I wanna try out this Surratt Beauty. This is the brow pomade. It's really interesting. It's almost like a little toothbrush on, 
I don't know, like a little toothbrush. So maybe like a spin on a spoolie. So this is clear. I'm gonna use this to brush up my brow hairs. And I think it works. I like it after, whereas I like to do the tinted one before, but I don't know if you can tell a difference. I feel like this one just looks a little bit more lifted and I appreciate that it doesn't leave a residue. Sometimes products do and then you kind of have to like brush through, but I feel like it, there's no residue at all, which is nice. So I'm really just gonna try to get these as fluffy as I can go. So I'm not sure in terms of hold, but I feel like that definitely did lift up my brows and make them fluffier. So I'm interested to keep trying this um, because I'm all about those fluffy brows lately. So I've got you zoomed in and I wanna go in with this Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Palette. Look at this freaking packaging. This looks like a book and it is heavy. So this is what the palette looks like. It's so pretty. It's almost like kind of like rich gemstone colors. I have to say I love the formula of Lunar Beauty so I'm really excited to play with this and I'm trying to decide which way I wanna go. I feel like I would usually go purple but we might go for like the greens today because I wanna do something different. I'm actually gonna start out with the shade Bonnie and I'm gonna use this Chikahodo, Chikahodo, I never know how to say that, Chikahodo blend brush. It feels really soft. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this in the crease. This brush feels really soft, wow. I've tried some like Wayne Goss brushes, some that I love, some that I didn't think were worth the hype. So I kind of am on the fence with like same thing with like Smith Cosmetics, like some of their brushes are absolutely incredible and then some I just didn't love. Uh, so it's interesting. I don't necessarily know that all luxury brushes are worth it, but the ones I'm trying today, I mean, they just feel good and they're just, I don't know. So I'm kind of just smoking this all over as a kind of transition shade. This is kind of like a, I would say like a grungy or a muted lime color. There's like a lime undertone to it. It's like that pukey green, but you know we love that. So next I'm gonna use this Kaleidos brush. I think it just comes in a set. And I think I wanna go into, I'm trying to decide if I wanna go into this green or this one. I just can't decide. Maybe I'll start with this one, which is called Marnie. So I'm gonna kinda of take this in the crease and on the lid. So lower than that first one. And then I can take a clean brush with a light hand, and just kind of blend them together. I'm gonna do the same thing. These are blending nicely. I really uh, liked his Strawberry Dream palette. So. I just like the different color stories. And when I think when he first revealed this, his lights were really bright, so it looked really like almost pastel, but it's not. It, it definitely has some depth to it. I would say it's like a muted kind of gemstone kind of vibe. So there's definitely depth to it. Uh, I don't know how to describe it though. It's not pastel at all. And then I do wanna go in with Nancy and see if I can kind of just amp this up a little bit. So I'm gonna use this really small brush. This is like a pencil brush. This shade is really bright. You know what, I wonder if I wanna put Nancy on the lid. Maybe I wanna just kind of put this on the lid because it's bright. I'm gonna switch brushes here. I think I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna deepen up that outer corner that I was working on because this shade is much brighter than I had anticipated. So I'm gonna use this Wayne Goss brush going back into Marnie and I just wanna deepen up. So thanks to your guys' suggestions, we started watching Peaky Blinders. We're on the second season and we like it. So the first few episodes I was kind of like, mm, I'm not sure, but now I like it. So those are like my kind of shows. I don't like it as much as like Suns, uh, or Game of Thrones, but I do like it enough. So I like, I've found that I like more of the drama. Like, I know they like, you know, shoot each other and, you know, they do all this like, you know, gang stuff, but I like more of like the family drama. So I think it has like just enough to keep me entertained. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do. This shade looks really pretty, but I don't know if it's too deep. I don't think the purple is what I'm looking for. We also have this shade. 
think I am going to go for the middle shade and just say yellow. So this is what it looks like. I'm actually just going to use my finger. And I want to do just like a dusting of it. Ooh, that's pretty. This almost looks like wet and I didn't wet my finger. Actually, I'm going to though to see what happens. Wow, this almost looks like a glossy lid. That is beautiful. This one reminds me almost of the uh, Kristen Dominique, what was her new palette? Like the these textures, they're almost hard pressed, these shimmers, and they're very thin. They're almost like toppers. Uh, so just keep that in mind. A couple of them are more metallic. So you can see this one is like a little bit more, um, I don't know, metallic, whereas this one's almost like a glistening topper. So just keep that in mind. I think a lot of these are more like to give you that wet look. So I like that actually, to really diffuse it on the lid. So this is the shade Mary, which is what I'm using. So this is dry and then I'm gonna wet it to really make it pop. Look at that, that is beautiful. I feel like this is a different look for me because I tend to shy away from like really dark eyelids but woo, I really like that so for the lower lash line I think I'm gonna switch it up and go into Kiki which is this like deep brown in here and I'm gonna use my Smith 220 one of my favorite brushes for the lower lash line and I'm really going to try to add some depth down here before I start smoking this out I think I'm actually gonna go into Fiona which is a metallic yeah, I think I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna wet my brush because I like to have a wet brush when I use metallics on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna use this really close up to the lash. And then underneath that, I'm gonna go in with Marnie and I'm gonna kind of smoke it to bring back the green. So I'm bringing this pretty far down. I think, I, I think I'm even gonna go into this shade Bonnie down here. Hopefully it's not too light. Cause I wanna just like bring back some more of that green really low down here. Okay, so I applied some lashes. I'm not sure what they are. I think they're from Lashaholics. I get a lot of my lashes from there, but these were ones that I've used before. I want to put a little bit of that Mary shade right in the center of my lower lash line. I just think it looks so pretty and like wet. So I've applied it on a brush and I wet the brush and I just wanna kind of sweep this in the center of the lower lash line. So for my inner rim, I'm gonna go in with this Marc Jacobs liner. I have like a mini. I don't wear liner in the rim a lot, especially dark, but because this is so dark, I feel like we kind of have to. So this is just a black shade. I might have to warm it up because I haven't used it in a while. Okay, so I just have to apply some mascara to the lower lash line, but I want to go on to contouring because I have this Viseart, uh, what is this called? The Highlight and Sculpt Palette. This is very powdery. As you can see, I've used it one time, and I basically use this shade mostly. I don't even know if my camera's focusing here. Let's see if we can get some focus. So I use this shade mostly and then tap a little bit of this in. So I have this brush from Chikahoto. This is the contour brush, which it looks weird, but it had like crazy good reviews. So I'm gonna dip into both of those. I mean, it's so powdery. And I'm going to... Okay, so I feel like I have a line. I'm trying to kind of push it up. It is soft and it fits in, but I feel like this would definitely not be for beginners. So I'm gonna go in with my Sonia G Face One and try to just like push up and kind of soften that contour. This palette is really powdery and like barely touching it and tapping off. It's just very powdery. I don't know if what you think from the front. I mean, it definitely think it contoured, but I think this is like a little dangerous. I mean, I'm like barely touching it. The brush feels really nice. I just think you could go really, really sharp and kind of get that line. So you kind of have to make sure that you're buffing it up so once i've done that again i'm taking that sonia g brush so i feel like this would be nice with a really light kind of buildable contour 
or if you want like an intense contour all the time. I like the brush, I just don't know. Um, I think you have to use another brush to really kind of make it look natural. But I definitely think it did give me that chiseled look. And the brush is really soft. So even though it's small and it fits right into your jawline, it's soft. So it's blendable, I guess. So to bronze up, I want to use this Gingerbread Man from Too Faced Spicy Bronzer. This is part of their holiday collection. And this is what it looks like. It looks like a cool tone bronzer. I'm also going to use this Chikahoto T2. I think this is Chikahoto. Uh, this is like one of their special editions. This bronzer looks like it's pretty shimmery, which I'm kind of like, mm. Ooh, it smells delicious. It smells like cocoa. This brush feels phenomenal. Wow, I'm having like really good luck with these brushes, which I'm like, damn, they're so expensive, but I am kind of understanding the hype. I think in the past, like I said, I've only tried like Wayne Goss. I bought a set. I think his only do come in sets. And there were some that were a hit, some that were a miss. So I think I'm more of the person that needs to pick out individuals that kind of stand out to me that I feel like are lacking in my collection. That bronzer looks pretty nice. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised with that. I feel like it looks nice and it blended nicely. Wow, love this brush too. So moving on to blush, I have this Jouer Rose Cut Gems palette. I was really excited when I got this in PR. So I've used this once and I can tell you I like the blushes, but I do not like this. This is a chalky, glittery fallout highlighter. So that definitely bummed me out because it's called Diamond in the Rough. I mean, it is chalky, chunky. Like, when you try to blend it, it falls all over the face. So I'm a little bummed out by that. I'm trying to think about what blush would look best with this. What I'm thinking here. I almost think I want to go safe. Maybe mix these two here. This is like more of a nude tone and this is more of like a kind of peachy pink. I'm going to use the Chikahoto T4, which is like the cheek, uh, I think it's the cheek. So I'm going to mix these two and it picks up a lot of product. So you want to make sure you're dusting off. Wow, that looks like still there's like a ton of product on there. Okay, so those appear to have a sheen to them, which they look matte in the pan. It could be that bronzer, but, huh. I don't know, I was really excited about this, but I'm kind of lackluster. Like, my thoughts are a little bit like, mm, and I usually love blush palettes. The highlighter not working is like a really big negative for me. So for highlighter, I want to go in with the Nabla Skin Glazing Glass Skin Highlighters. I have the shade here, Ozone, which looks a little bit more cool toned. I might actually go in with this one. This one is called... Amnesia. Yeah, I think I'm going to go in with Amnesia, which is like a pretty gold. And these I do enjoy. These are not chunky, glittery, not a ton of powder kick up. So these really come to life when you like buff them into the skin. They're interesting because they are intense. As you can see right there, but they're not chalky. They don't fly all over the place. They're not thick. Like they're not like a, a metallic that's like leaves a stripe. As you can see when I'm looking forward, it's like almost undetectable. And then I turn and you see it. I feel like these are really nice to just, like I said, swirl and buff into the skin. It's like that lit from within kind of look. Like this is one that I would put on the forehead. It's just not too much. So I'm going to line my lips. I'm going to go in with Melt Headbang. So I apply my lip liner and then I put some lip stain on. I still do my popsicle lips. It's just like in my blood, I can't stop. This is from a brand called, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'll link it down below. It's a, I think it's like a K-beauty brand. I got it off of Amazon, A-P-I-E-U. Anyways, I have this shade. I don't even know what shade I have in. Call me Coral. So I use that. Uh, I used to use the Milk Makeup Pen, but they discontinued it. So I'm trying to think. I think I want to go with the Peachy shade, which is called Peachy. Now I've seen that this is really light. So I'm going to... Yeah, this is insanely light. So I am going to apply just kind of like that. And then kind of tap it in. This set is not one, or this ABH set, is not one uh, that you can like kind of use all over. 
unless you're insanely fair. So just keep that in mind. You definitely want to use it with a darker lip liner, but I think it looks pretty. It reminds me almost of Omrizi. What was it called? I think it was called Reezy. One of her lip land colors that I really liked. So I'll actually use it. It's just pretty light. So the last thing I have is this Fourth Ray Beauty Glisten Up Mist. Uh, I think Kathleen Light said this is like the Tatcha Dewy. Why did I do that while I'm trying to talk? The Tatcha uh, Dewy Skin Mist, but it's like more affordable. Okay, so essentially it's just like a glowy setting spray. So we're gonna try this out. I think she said that the Mr. Oh, <laughs> right in my fucking face. Good job, Babs. I think she said that the Mr. wasn't her favorite, but it was okay. So let's go ahead and try. Whoa, I look dewy. Ooh, I hope I didn't go too far on that. Ooh, where's my beauty blender? I'm like, okay, let's fan this off. Wow, maybe I was a little heavy handed there. Okay, that is some dew. If you are dry, which I know she is, now I'm understanding why she's like in love with this. Okay, there's a couple. Oh, no! No, do you see that? Shit, damn it. I think that was my fault. This is like one of those crisis moments. I'm gonna try to buff in some blush. Damn it, I should have just let it go. Why did I do that? Oh my God. You know, it's like one of those moments where you're like, this could ruin everything, but we don't have time to take this all off. So I'm just tapping some blush over that. I should have not done that. I think it's uh, salvageable, but I'm like mad at myself that I did that. Okay, so I did change my shirt because I had a red shirt on and I was like, that doesn't match, you know, the eyes. We're going for like a grungy look here. So I wanted to also use this new Lunar Beauty lip gloss in Enchantment. I used this in a video on Instagram or IGTV so pretty it's like a beautiful oh it's so pretty like a beautiful pink shift yeah can you see that oh my gosh it's like a pinky purple shift all right guys here's my finished makeup look and i'm going to tell you my thoughts i feel like we had a pretty successful day i'm going to start off with the base the Anna Sue Primer, I'm going to have to keep playing with it. It feels quite similar to the Tarte one, but uh, the Tarte one's a little bit thicker. This one is a little bit thinner when you rub it together. Of course, I'm going to have to try this multiple times with different foundations since I did use a new one today. But so far, so good. Nothing weird that I noticed. Uh, quite impressed with this pretty vulgar lava foundation. The only thing is this is a massive bottle. It's glass. I would not travel with this, but I do like it. I like that it has a pump. It was smoothing. I feel like it was matte, almost like it dried down to a powder, but not in a dry looking way. I don't know. The coverage was just quick and easy, quite smoothing. I just really liked it. Didn't oxidize. Nothing really standing out to me. So um, in terms of negative. So I really like this. I thought I saw Tati raving about this. So I was excited to try it and I'm glad I got kind of the option to. And then also the Dose of Colors Concealer I really like as well. It almost dried to a powder, as I said, and I had it on, and usually when I have it on for a couple minutes, and I'm kind of telling you guys about it, I like to go in and kind of buff out any creasing before I set, and when I went to do that, there was like no creasing. I know there's been concealers in the past that said they were self-setting, and I just never have had that experience, but I almost feel like this could be the one. I'm not sure if that's a claim. I'm going to read more about it, but... It almost went from like a cream to a powder again, but not in a dry way and the coverage was a nice medium buildable So I think I'm really gonna like this too. Of course. I like the by Terry powder I think this is a great shade for me. I think you just have to decide what shade will work for you, but I really enjoy this powder uh, Just smoothing it doesn't disrupt your foundation very thin in texture So it's just one of my favorites and the Surratt brow products. I like this, but I don't know if it has the hold that I would like because it's quite soft. It's not one of those like really sticky um, like lockdown gels. So I like this to add a final touch, but I don't know if it's gonna give you that all day stay. So I'll have to keep playing with this. Just because it's a high price, I just don't know if I like this more than like my Glossier Boy Brow. In terms of the Viseart palette, I don't dislike it, but I just don't think that it's worth the price upon my first impression using it twice. Very powdery. 
I just feel like it's a little bit intense. Uh, I haven't tried the highlighters on the face yet, so again, I can't give you, you know, my full, like, review on it. But my first impression is it's pricey, and I wouldn't say go get it, you know? Like, I feel like you could use the Benefit Hula, which a lot of you probably already have, or a drugstore contour powder. So I just feel like it's hard to work with because it is so powdery. I mean, I've used it twice, and it's kind of a mess. Now, I will say kudos to them for having a really deep shade in here because this is quite deep, and I think it'll work if you have a hard time and you feel like all the contour, you know, shades you see are like you know medium skin tone you might want to you know check this out but a little bit powdery for my taste and I feel like you can go overboard quite quickly also going to say that I'm not going to recommend this Jouer palette which I'm quite shocked about the blushes are pretty sure but the highlighter which is the biggest pan in here is a hot mess like I love glitter and everything and I do not like this highlighter the blushes are nice but I think they had a palette in the past that had six blushes. I would recommend that or a Tarte blush palette or the uh, Jouer blush duos. I just think, you know, the highlighter in the center is kind of the star of the show and it's a dud. So for me, with all the new makeup out that is like phenomenal, this is just not up to par. So the Lunar Beauty palette I'm happy with. I think it's so beautiful, the eye look that I did. And I think when you look at this, you think you have to do purple because it really is eye catching. But it is interesting, these shades right here, you could do like a gunmetal color, which my eye doesn't get drawn to them, but my favorite shade by far is Mary, the one that I put on my lids. It looks like asphalt, like a gray asphalt, beautiful. So as I said, some of these are toppers, but then you have metallic. So let me swatch and show you the difference. So here's two of the metallics, right? So they're like a typical metallic powdery, um, like thick kind of eyeshadow that's really going to go like if you want to do a cut crease and you really want to pack that on and then you have shades like Mary and then what is this one Phoebe which are toppers so I don't know if you can see a difference if I give you a close-up how much thicker these two are and then these ones are like almost like those metallic toppers where they really just look wet right almost like almost like a super shock shadow, but not that texture, but they give you that wet look. I mean, my eyes look almost like I put on a gloss on my eyes, which we all know is not comfortable and will not look good long term. So I think this is a beautiful palette. I love that Manny steps out and does different stuff. And I think this is still wearable, but it's like a twist, right? So if you like these beautiful purples or even like these dusty colors, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a dusty, muted, jewel tone palette. Very, very pretty, blended beautifully. I had no problems with it. So I really, really like it. I think he kills it with the packaging and I'm just really proud of him. He's a great person. I know he's had drama or whatever, but I speak to him regularly and he's been nothing but nice to me and I'm just excited to see what his brand comes out with. So in terms of this Too Faced bronzer, I actually liked it more than I thought. It is definitely cool toned and it does have a satin like uh, sheen to it, but it's nothing too crazy. It didn't accentuate texture, so I actually like it more than I thought. And I do like these Nabla uh, highlighters. I think the packaging is gorgeous. The presentation is gorgeous. And I like that these are, they're not the metallic strip, right? You guys, I tell you, I burp all the time. They're not like the typical thick metallic stripe on your face that you feel like, oh, I've gone too far. If you feel that way with highlighters and you're like, they all just look like a stripe on my face, it doesn't look natural, I think you would really like these because they have enough shine and you really can buff them in. I mean, I definitely am highlighted. It looks beautiful and glowy, but it's not like a powder sitting on top of the skin. So I think this formula is beautiful. I also really love the Lunar Beauty glosses and this is probably my favorite shade because I love like a... I don't know like a topper moment you know and I just think this is so beautiful and it smells like fucking heaven I can't even describe the smell you just have to smell it yourself but I think this is beautiful it's like a purpley pinky but it's not like it's not like metallic you know the ones that you apply and you're like oh that looks dry and crusty this is like a juicy when the light hits it so I really like this and I actually really like this uh, fourth ray beauty glisten up mist uh, except for I just went to ham and then don't touch your face afterwards so when you spray it let it sink in don't go in with the beauty blender like I did because I started pressing it in and lifting my blush which that is a no-no but I think it is really dewy it's almost like that Catrice one I was talking about the freezing spray but like times 10 like it's like really dewy if you feel like you're powdery or dry I think you would really like this moving on to the brushes okay so let me tell you my thoughts first of all the Sonia G face one is life-changing so nice wow it is like 
heaven on your face. It literally is like heaven on your face. Oh my gosh. It's just, honestly, it's so soft. And I've had brushes lately that I feel like are scratching and lifting my bronzer and contour. This is amazing. I honestly, the hype on this, I believe it. I believe it. I love it. I know it's expensive, but wow. I uh, also really enjoyed this Koyu Koyudo. This is the foundation brush. Now, here's something that's interesting about this. I think this is really cool because I will use this to bronze. This almost looks like a dupe for the Tom Ford bronzer brush, which is like $115. Now, this is pricey. I think it's like $60. Bucks, but I could use it for so many different things. I can't believe I used this for foundation and it blended on so nicely. So, again, this was highly rated and I really like it. And I really like the Chickahodo contour brush. I feel like it did sculpt out. Like, if you have a hard time sculpting out your cheeks, I mean, it's really interesting because it's so small, you would think it would just leave a line, but if you use buffing mo motions and you kind of push up, it's soft. Like, it's small, but it's so damn soft. I was going to say the F word, but I'm trying to be PG here. But this is honestly, wow. Like, it's, these are making me feel like a lot of the brushes that I have in my collection that I've held onto, I just, like, don't like them. You know, it's like I've been using them because they're there but they're not really wowing me. Another one that I really like is the Chickahodo T2. I use this for bronzer, and I just feel like I had no patchiness. Now recently, I feel like I've been having patchiness with my bronzer. My skin's just been out of whack, as I said, but I feel like my base looks pretty freaking blended and beautiful. I don't know if it's the brushes. I don't know what it is. This is like some magic. And then lastly, this is the T4 from Chickahodo. This is probably my least favorite brush out of everything. It's fine, but I used it for blush. It is very soft, but I didn't notice anything like standing out. So, you know, my number one pick would be the uh, Sonia G face and then probably the Koyudo one. These two just stood out to me because they're kind of the workhorses that'll get your foundation and stuff on. But I have to say, I pretty much liked all the brushes that I used. I know they're expensive, but I am pretty impressed with everything. So I'm just happy to get back to trying new makeup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below your thoughts. You guys have been requesting me to use greens. So here they are. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.